Hello and welcome to another episode. Uh, this one is how to enable plug and charge in your car. Plug and charge is a technology that simplifies EV charging by allowing automatic authentication and payment initiation when you plug your vehicle into a compatible charging station, eliminating the need for RFID cards, apps or other manual authorization methods. In more detail, plug and charge is a new communication protocol that allows an EV to automatically identify itself to a charging station and initiate a charging session simply by plugging in. The EV and the charging station establish a secure communication link using um, a protocol called ISO 15118 standard and the EV transmits its unique identification details to the charger. The benefits Convenience, there's no need for an RFID card, an app, or any other manual authentication method. It's quite simple. Uh, you simply plug in and start charging. And then whoever you signed up for to look after your charging system uh, bills you at a later date. The, the communication between the EV and the charging station is secured using digital certificates. Your car needs to be compatible and the kit EV3 is compatible and so is the EV9 and the facelift of the EV6 and also probably the new ones. The charger, whether it be DC or AC, needs to be compatible. At the moment, Ionity chargers in the UK are the only ones to support the standard. Other networks support the older and different auto charge standard. So in more detail, how does plug and charge work? You Plug and charge depends on the charge point equipment and the EV both being compliant. A plug and charge connection can only establish when certain technical requirements and certifications are met. The EV must be compatible with the plug and charge system and have a plug and charge certificate installed, which the EV3, I think it has. The charge point must have plug and charge compatibility implemented. And this is the responsibility of the charge point operator or CPO. In this example, it's Ionity. If both of these requirements are met, once the EV is plugged into the charge point, an encrypted connection establishes, also known as a TLS, Transport Layer Security Handshake. Incidentally, this is what differentiates plug and charge from auto charge. During this handshake, the charge point presents its digital certificates to identify its legitimacy. The EV will verify these certificates to inspect signatures and expiration dates. If verified successfully, the TLS handshake is complete and the charge will start within a few seconds. So hopefully when I demonstrate this, you will see this happening, but it'd be transparent and easy. So let's see how we get on. Um, I'm gonna do this using Kia Charge and I, I think you can use all other mobility providers like um, Octopus Electroverse, but for now, I'm just going to do it this way. Now, I've uh, enabled my Kia Charge and the card's arrived and I've activated it. So I don't think the options appear until your card's activated, but this is what I did. Right, you open Kia Charge and then Account, Contract Overview, Contract Settings, and then scroll down the bottom and you've got plug and charge there. So that's gonna need a PCID, which is in your head unit, uh, which is a, a unique code to the car, I believe. And this will scan the QR code and then link it to it. And then the first time you charge at a plug and charge uh, provider, it'll send the certificate down the charge cable um, on the data connection to the car and then it will be properly enabled. So if I press plug and charge now, enable, enable, it then asks me to scan the PCID. So that is in EV menu, settings, plug and charge. I can even enter it manually. There you go. Now it says no, you can't check availability. So I found that if I backspaced uh, or I put a space in there and backspaced, then there's a bug in it. So you, 
then press check availability. Provision certificate is gone green. So I think that's it. And, that, and then you scroll down to enable plug and charge and off you go. Uh, next time you plug into a plug and charge charger, that's it. And then it's, uh, you've just got to enable it on the screen as well. As it says, almost done. Plug and charge is currently pending. A plug and charge contract certificate has been created and needs to be delivered to your vehicle. Once the contract certificate has been successfully delivered to your vehicle, the status of the contract details page will change from pending to enabled. So I think it's coming down the charge cable um, or is it coming via Kia Connect? Anyway, I'll leave it a bit and see what turns up or I'll just go to a charger and try it. Keep an eye out to see if it's changed from pending. Anyway, going back to contracts, it now says plug and charge pending. Something else I need to add, um, compared to last time I had uh, Kia Charge uh, for three, when I had my EV6 in 2021, um, it also included the add-on for Ionity. Um, without that add-on, you're just paying the bog standard price of 74 pence a kilowatt hour for Ionity, which is an awful lot. Now, um, I think there's a couple of cases in the Kia Charge list where you don't get discount, and IONT is one, I think BP Pulse is another. So it's worth examining the price list to see if it's, it's worth it for you to use. If I open Kia Charge and I go into Account and then Contract Overview uh, and press Contract Settings and scroll down again. You'll notice that you can buy add-on packages and uh, the cheapest one for Ionity is 690 a month. And uh, if you're charging, uh, fast charging twice a month, it's probably worth having that. And I'm going to just have it for April uh, or the end of March and April because I'm going to use it a few times when I'm going holiday and probably going to fully charge or everything electric or whatever it's called these days. And that's the, so this is the Ionity Power add-on. Uh, 6 90 a month and that gives you 20 pence discount off the 74 pence down to 54 pence uh, when you charge okay i'm on my way to ionity to try and get plug and charge working by plugging it into ionity charger because that's the way it's supposed to get this certificate delivered so um, i'm just going up the m6 to ionity stafford and i'll just go through um, some of the more driving aids and I've also got the head-up display mirrored down the bottom you do that by pressing the menu button until it comes up keep on pressing it there you go as you can see um, all the blocks and the cars and the lorry shapes are all mirrored and you also see um, the blind spot uh, monitors come on when you're close and a map of where all the traffic is the speed limit so push it up just about seven miles to go um, also following advice on the channel comments I've started to use the indicator without activating it all the way and that just makes it flash so many times so it turns off when you're doing a lane change assist then so if I do one now notice it's doing it there we go I've got the maximum number of flashes turned on it's settable in the menus I'm also running the eco mode and we've got um, 7.9 miles Do another lane change assist now, just slightly touch the indicator. There we 
we go. Activated another one done. And it's next left. And there's the ionity. The M1. And just arrived at Ironty Stafford, so in theory, I'll be able to just plug it in and it will install the certificate and it will start. And I've set the charge limit of 70. I'm just at 69 at the moment because I don't want to spend too much money here at the current rate. I'm supposed to wait for this. Actually, it's just started, so uh, so it worked without any issues whatsoever. So let's see if anything's changed in the settings. Nope. Of course, I'm past the peak charging level. I think it's probably 55 to 60 percent state of charge. So I'm not going to get the 140, 150 that's promised. It's going quick enough. And then when it gets to 70, the car will stop, and then I can just unplug the cable just like I normally do. Um, Currently up to 99.7 kilowatts. A hundred. Yeah, ain't that bad, you know, compared to the EV6. I don't think it preconditioned the battery either, um, which is strange because I'm sure it's done it here before. It's 15 degrees outside, so in theory, it should do it for the temperature. Oh, it's going downwards now.
and see if I can stop it. Stop it on the charger. It says it stopped. And we can unplug. So that was straightforward. Um, the plug and charge is enabled now, so I know that that works. I know that Ion City works with the car with no issues. And I press the stop button on the Ion charger and, and you've got a certain set amount of time to unplug the cable. Um, I pulled the DC fast charge cable straight out. So I don't understand how people are getting difficulty unless they're new to EVs. Um, Since I originally recorded this video, um, I've, I've been on holiday. I went to Devon for a week and then I went to the Everything Electric show, fully formerly known as Fully Charged at the London Docklands the week after. On the way to Devon, I stopped at Clumpton, where there's Nianti station, and plug and charge would not work. It seemed to be having uh, technical communication issues. The only way I could get it to work was with the RFID card. Then, uh, on the way to Everything Electric last week, I tried to charge at Milton Keynes Parkway by Arnity. Um, again, that didn't start the charge. And when I tried to start it with the RFID card, I got not enough power message on the charger. So the charger was having an, an issue again. Um, so I had to charge there on the way back and I tried a different unit and, and that didn't start either. So I had to use the RFID card. So I've not had much luck. I mean, I will try some more Ionity chargers. As I understood it, they'd all been software upgraded so that they could handle the um, plug and charge. But God knows, uh, if you have experience of this, let me know in the comments which ones are working and which ones are not. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching.